Hey, welcome to Sunday Talks and welcome to this fall season that we're doing. I appreciate Rox Horton uh, doing the last season for us. He talked about discipleship as Jesus uh, practiced discipleship and then uh, last week on hospitality. And we're starting this new fall season and going to do a lot of different stuff. I'm calling it the best word I could come up with, David, was cornucopia. I just like that <laughs> word. But it's just an overabundance of things. That's and right. we're, we're just overflowing with, with good things and getting to start off this first one with somebody i've wanted you to hear from and there, there are several in our church who you don't know who the guy is sitting to my left but a lot of you who've been here for a while know him well uh, is david bond from arkansas baptist state convention and david is well loved if, if you were here mm-hmm. five years ago you know him he was our interim pastor and we're going to talk a little bit about that but i wanted just for our our members david who are new to the church and those who you know, yesterday I, we got to visit Miss Joanne Henderson, mm. and she, I, I'll, I'll this great quote. She said, um, "Isn't God good to us that He gives us the gift of memory?" Oh, wow. And for our people, they have the gift of memory of some real sweet times mm. with you, and and they often speak about those times. And even someone recalled Steve Laster recalled one yesterday of of you know the church. And when you're the interim pastor, you still have to deal with the tragedies and death and loss and, and mm-hmm. those things. And you, you become pastor yeah. uh, during that time. And so uh, we're glad to have you. Oh, well, thanks for letting me come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to talking some more about that, but this is a tremendous church family and that's what they were to us and are to us is still mm-hmm. family. Yeah. And even just driving up here this morning, just thinking through some of those things. And, yeah. and, uh, and that's a great, that's a great quote, the, the, yeah. the gift of memory. And I'm yeah. grateful for that as well. Certainly have tremendous memories of, yeah. of our time here. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell us a little about David Bond. I mean, for those yeah. who, and, and even some of our people who were here five years ago probably never heard some of the stuff that you may sure. want to just share about sure. yourself, your life, and your family. Sure. Yeah, it was just, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a native uh, of, of Houston, Texas, where my family was, is from originally, but grew up in Arkansas. So I'm an Arkansas guy um, and have been in ministry, uh, almost all my ministry in, in Arkansas. Uh, you know, the Lord is, has allow me to have a variety of experiences and different mm-hmm. positions in, in church work that he's uh, used throughout the years, continue to use. So I started out <clears throat> in doing a music and youth ministry. Yeah. And that was what a lot of churches did back, back in the yeah. back in the day. Did that for uh, several years. And then <clears throat> after seminary, moved into um, more of a uh, administration, education, associate mm-hmm. pastor, uh, discipleship type of role. And that's probably where I found a, a a really good good fit for many years there. Uh, did did pastor in in Russellville, Second Baptist Church in Russellville. Wonderful uh, church folks there for a few years, and then now I've been um, on staff with Arkansas Baptist State Convention. In a couple of months, it'll be twelve years. So it's hard wow. to hard to think it's been yeah. that long, but it has. And um, uh, just really enjoyed totally different type of ministry, but enjoyed that as well. We live in, in Bryant. I've been there. Uh, it's my second time to live in Bryant, so it's been a total now of almost 20 years. Hmm. And uh, connected to First Southern Baptist Church there. That's our that's our our church. And uh, live there. My wife Renee and I have been married for 28 years. Uh, Grew up in Ashdown, Arkansas. She's a native of Ashdown. That's where I grew up most of most of my life. And we have two daughters, uh, Kelsey and Cassidy, twenty six and twenty now. And um, and so they're off and, and doing 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 their thing and mm-hmm. and pr- proud of them. But um, just uh, yeah, man, just grateful for for my family and and where the Lord's brought us through the yeah. years and. And those experiences we've been able to have uh, in Arkansas. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to shift up the questions. I I want to go in right into the church, and we're going to talk about the convention. Uh, Do there's a follow up with with one of the things you said about your what you've done in in ministry, but uh, uh, so uh, for those who may not be familiar, when when uh, uh, a lot of times the Southern Baptist churches we're without a pastor, um, the senior pastor, lead pastor, then we'll call in an interim pastor, Mm -hmm. and. Particularly when a church is, you know, David Hatfield had been our pastor for <clears> close <throat> to 30 years, then you probably need to take a longer interim and you need, you know, you need to just kind of just reset and review things. And so uh, David came in five years ago, five right. years ago, right about this time, mm-hmm. a, little, yeah. a little bit later. Uh, and no, you finished up five years ago. You came six years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think it's right. Yeah. Right. So uh, you were finishing up in December, January of, yeah. of 2017 when I came. Yeah. 
but so 2016 you're 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 beginning that ministry uh -huh. and uh um and we were blessed to have him here uh several y'all served on committees and teams oh yeah and, and so talk a little bit about your experience <clears throat> here and and uh you know just maybe some highlights some perspectives uh that you have from your time yeah here. um yeah larry so uh yeah it was it, it was what what we what we call the intentional interim ministry which um is perfectly designed for churches just like you said i mean they, they, they're coming out of a uh, a long-term uh pastorate you know mm -hmm. leadership and and um you know and of course at woodland heights uh even even we talked about this a little bit earlier but you know the the, the city has grown out this direction yeah. over those over those years uh the land of just of course culture and, and ministry changed so much over those years and so anytime that happens <clears throat> it's good for any church to just uh, before you just dive into well let's go find mm -hmm. a new person to lead right. us into whatever this next stage looks like well let's just pause for a minute let's just take let's just ask some questions mm -hmm. that you can ask in an interim time that it's more right. difficult to ask when when a, a existing pastor is there right. because sometimes some of those uh, really hard evaluation type questions mm -hmm. um, can be hard to ask without it uh, looking like you're blaming a pastor, <laughs> you know. Right, right. And and so when you're in that interim time, it does give churches an opportunity to to without pointing blame at anybody, just say, okay, who are we? Right. And and right. and 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 what are some things that that we're doing now that uh, are foundational to who we are mm -hmm. that we want to make sure we maintain and keep moving forward? Right. You know, what are some things that Hey, you know what? Uh, they, they 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 just need to be different. They need yeah. to be changed. Yeah. Maybe they need to go. What are some things that we've been wanting to do or need, mm -hmm. knowing we needed to yeah. do? Yeah. But it's never been the right setting or the right time to actually implement them. Mm -hmm. And so those are the the type of things that that in an interim period you can you can do, and it's harder to do maybe maybe otherwise. And so that's exactly where Wilden Heights was. It, it yeah. was a. a, a, a a great church family, mm -hmm. no, you know, uh, roiling conflict or any anything like that. Obviously, in a setting where the whole church know, knew that, hey, great growth has taken place, mm -hmm. but but we're just at the cusp of what could be in mm -hmm. terms of where the city's going and the opportunities right. that are before us. And so they 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 were ready to go on that journey, you know, yeah, and yeah. and they they embraced it with enthusiasm. Um, you know, we I, we talked about putting a team together just to kind of give you an idea of, of, of the spirit of the church and how ready they were maybe to engage in this. Put together what we call a transition team. They end up being 24 um, incredible men and women representative mm -hmm. of age groups and ministries in the church and all new uh, folks have been here a long time, folks who are, who are newer, that sort of thing. And we went through a process of putting that team together, and, and we identified those 24 that we wanted to ask to, to serve, and every one of them said yes. That's and we, awesome. we, yeah. And, yeah. And, and they were all too busy to do it. <laughs> they, yeah. they were all already uh, involved in all kind of leadership of the church, but they love this church so much, mm -hmm. and they believe so much in the future of it yeah. that they, they felt like it was, it was time well spent. And, yeah. and it was, and they worked extremely hard. They did new things. They asked tough questions. Um, led the church well. Came up with, you know, I would try to help them with the ideas and things, and they would go with it and run with it. And they mm -hmm. they did all the work, you know, to to make everything yeah. happen. And like you said, you know, without um, uh, a, a full time pastor, they jumped in and did all yeah. all other ministry ministry work as well. But um, yeah, so that's what I remember a lot about that process yeah. is just the spirit of the church. Um, it wasn't always easy. It wasn't easy to yeah. do to do what they did, but they just embraced it um, and and really did some tremendous work. And hopefully, you know, uh, you can see some of the fruit of that. You know, yeah. coming in and, yeah. and realizing not that everything was was done and settled and fixed and all that all those type of things, but but they were, I think they were in a position to. Um, be ready for new pastoral leadership. Right. In fact, just one other thing, and we'll, I'll stop on that point. But you know, one of, one person even said to me, you know, despite evaluating the things you do during that time as far as purpose and leadership and those types of things, one of them just said, hey, you know, we we had to even get used to uh, a new face behind that pulpit yes. every week. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and just learning to, uh, in fact, people said this to me. I had to learn. I didn't know that I could even call someone else my pastor yeah, yeah yeah and just just to even get past that hurdle of mm -hmm. okay I, I can have another pastor who can right, who can right. pastor my family and lead, yeah. lead us and those yeah. type of things just even getting used to that concept yeah, yeah. is is a big deal yes when yeah. you've been through a, yeah. a long-term well-loved uh pastor absolutely. like they were so absolutely you know and one of the things i was thinking about when you talked about the team 
So we got the team back together <laughs> after about, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it had been quite a year, but it was several <clears> months, maybe close to a year afterwards, and we went back over some of the things they had been dreaming about, oh, talking yeah. about, and just talking about, okay, hey, we, we, we've done some of these things, or these things were accomplished. And then other things, and so we did a kind of a re, you know, readjustment. And okay, here's here's some things we need to work on. It, that was beneficial to me. That you kind of, to me, I always felt like the uh, uh, interim kind of sets the tee up for the guy for the next mm-hmm. guy. It's like, hey, okay, here's here's your, and, and you know, you never know what it might have been like had you not had that. You're right. You know, and there's some, there's some, there's hopefully there's some battles and there's some conflict that that I was spared because you you came through and you might not have dealt with it but at least maybe you you helped redirect some focus and I appreciate that yeah and, and we're I think it even even years down the line that you see fruition of that and yeah. so um appreciate I appreciate you being here appreciate uh the ministry and and one of the best things to me is that you know when you're when you are when you've served somewhere and years later they keep talking about you, and <laughs> once you come back and do something, that's a good sign. You well, know, so, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, they're uh, special, special folks for, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, one of that and that that was kind of you know, I mean, you, you were doing that, but you had a full time job at the Arkansas Baptist State Convention, like you said, for the last twelve years. And I want to talk a little about your role there. Yeah, what you're, I mean, you've and it, that's changed over the oh, years, sure. and you're in a, yeah. sort of a new role now. Mm-hmm. But one thing I've loved about you, David, and and I think this is. Uh, my grandfather tried to direct me as a young man. He was not in ministry, but he said, son, he said, if you're going to make it in ministry, uh, and I want to be a youth pastor, uh-huh. and he said, sure. you need to be a music and youth guy. <laughs> that's, that's why every, every church has to have a music and youth guy. It's, and back then, oh, yeah. they did. And oh, yeah. musically, that was just not my skill set, and I just was going to make it on my own. But you have literally done just about everything. I don't. You brought. Have you ever been a children's minister? Uh well, not not not, not officially. officially. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's but right. you probably had to oversee. What oh, yeah, somebody of course. Else yeah. But but you have done it all, and I think that gives you an added strength at the convention of. You know, sometimes sometimes you can be in denominational work yeah. or in, in any institution where you're kind of in a leadership role, but you don't really know what the people that you're working with have done. But you can go into just about every every church in the state and say, "Hey, listen, with staff, you you've kind of done that. You know, whether it's pastor or whatever else, and even different sizes of churches, uh-huh. uh, that's a blessing, especially for you know a younger guy to be able to have had that experience and then come to the convention and do yeah. that. So yeah. I think that's a, that's a bonus, and I, I would encourage other guys. I think that's a great way, you know, to explore your call. Is that hey, yeah, be open to opportunities and do whatever, however God can use you, you know. Yeah, well, that's a great word, and yeah, you know, and of course, one of the things I, I do get to do is, is spend some time with some college students on occasion who are, who are looking into ministry and going into yeah. ministry, and and you know, I tell them. In fact, even right, even recently, had an exchange with one, and you know, as a 19 year old student, 20 year old student, I'm not sure exactly what God wants me to do, and I was like, well, I, that's that's fine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, because I told them I said when I was in college, I didn't even know what I'm doing now. I didn't even know it was even a thing. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. much less. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I want to do with with my ministry, yeah. but but. but but like you said, when you just when you just try to serve the Lord wherever you are and mm-hmm. and do what, what what you feel like He's He's leading you to do and w- even even whatever position that may be, uh, and He's got a purpose behind it. Because I can look back now and like you like you said, you know, even though thirty years ago I had no idea that my job that I do now was even a job at all or a ministry at all, but but now I can look back and go, you know, the way that God has led me to do these right. these different things. Um, and now with my role is to try and, and be a, a resource for 1,500 churches in all kinds of settings and talk about all kinds of different yeah. types of ministry and, and things. And, yeah, on some level, uh, I hope that, you know, I can sit down with someone and, and, and draw from some experiences and, and, right. and from some training and right. things and things that I've been able to do. And on some level, at least be able to, to, uh, to, to speak from, from, from some, some type of experience yeah. or, or yeah. Uh, have at least an appreciation, at the very least, an appreciation for, I understand, you know, the big buckets of what you do. And, right. And, and let's talk about that. So, yeah, you know, the Lord has definitely been, been in it the yeah. entire so, time. So what's your, what's your role now? What do you yeah. – 
So, so right now, um, and, and I'm trying to remember the title. The title. <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask you. <laughs> that, yeah, but, yeah. Because uh, because we do some reorganization and, and things. Um, so I'm I'm currently leading the the, the business team, Arkansas okay, Baptist State yeah. Convention. So I'm director of convention business, um, and I've been in that role now uh, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And 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 before that was was on the convention administration side, learning learning that a little bit. Our convention committees mm-hmm. and just the structures of of uh, how we uh, try to uh, 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 provide uh, leadership from what the churches need need and have asked us to do. Um, been on been on that side of it, but came to the state convention twelve years ago. Evangelism and church growth team at the mm-hmm. time. It's evangelism and church health team now, uh, and came with a focus on general church leadership, Sunday school, small mm-hmm. groups, discipleship, yeah. and and then just kind of have grown through all of that and and yeah. learned uh, uh, lots of lots of other 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 things along the way. So so my role now is lead lead convention business team and and have learned a whole lot about that. But I still. Um, serve churches in the areas of church revitalization and some general Sunday mm-hmm. school uh, thing. That's still my heart. I mean, that, that's right, still right, that's still yeah, been a whole lot yeah. of my life is yeah. is um, helping churches create processes for discipleship and Sunday school right. ministries and those type of things. And so um, have have some different responsibilities now, but that that's still that's still where a lot of my heart is and and what I still uh, get to do. Yeah. You know, but on, you know, when I'm, you when know, I'm asked to. And, and people may not realize this, but fifteen hundred churches and cooperative program money's coming in and i mean yeah. the state convention's budget's a lot it's a, it's a big organization mm-hmm. and the business side of that is very important uh you know old timers will know dan jordan and jimmy sheffield was so much in in those kind of roles in the, right. in the past and i know you gleaned some probably from oh, both of those every guys. every week every day just yeah. about yeah and, mm-hmm. and uh yeah. but it is very important and uh you know we we want to focus on the we got to do this the spiritual is, is who we are but yeah to maintain that business and, yeah. and i appreciate the accountability that our convention has and the transparency of you yeah. know where we spend our money and how it's spent that's uh that's a blessing and so i appreciate that you're doing that and that's a that's a good role i think it's a good role for you so yeah well yeah. thank you well it, it is it's, it's been it's been very um it's just challenging of course like everything is but but very also uh you know from from this side of it you just see the heart of Arkansas Baptist. I mean, and yeah. one of the things is, you know, in 2020, of course, everybody knows COVID and all those type of things. And there was a period of time when, when this when this first happened, and um, you know, churches were not be able to meet, and nobody mm-hmm. knew what that was going to mean. And I was on conference calls and guys from all over the country, oh, and they were yeah. like, "Man, is this going? We going? Is it going to be a?" We need to prepare for fifty percent drop yeah, or thirty yeah. percent. You know, yeah. how, just how bad is it going to yeah. be? <clears throat> and in Arkansas, what Arkansas Baptist did is they said, you know, they they just they gave and supported their. We mm-hmm. just anecdotally, we heard local churches saying, "Yeah, man, our giving, our folks are are are, are staying the course and, and making right. sure things are funded." And even in the state, of course, we had a tremendous cooperative program year, and 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 just to show the Arkansas Baptist, the heart of Arkansas Baptist, what I'm trying to get to. In 2020, um, gave a million dollars more to the inter- just directly to the International Mission Board than we wow. had in 2019. Wow. That's awesome. And had the largest crop program uh, year we ever had. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 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 this, that, that, but that's that's what Arkansas Baptist did. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah. this is one of the most challenging seasons we ever had. Mm-hmm. But what we're going to prioritize is making sure that we fund missions yes. and 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 ministry yes. in Arkansas and in our church, but around the world. Right. Right. And that just showed that's that's where the heart of our folks are. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't have been able to. So I, I just had the opportunity to really see that mm-hmm. in a different way in my role, and and have a greater appreciation for it. You yeah. know, and yeah. re, and it just let us know like again who Arkansas Baptists really are and what 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 matters to yeah. them, and yeah. that's powerful. It was really awesome. And so as you've been, you've had a role change. You've had mm-hmm. uh, as we've all experienced COVID. I mean, that's yeah. been. I mean, that's been. You know, I think I think if nobody, if you didn't have anything else going on in your life, that's that's a pretty traumatizing thing. But then you've had some health concerns that, yeah. that uh, probably a lot of our folks. I know we prayed for you a lot, yeah. and, and a lot of them do, but some of them may not know. And just yeah. kind of bring us up to speed of where that's gone and where, kind yeah. of where you are now. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, so uh, yeah, just for extra fun, you know, and 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 two thousand. So yeah, in two thousand eighteen, um, uh, was diagnosed with stomach cancer, and I mean. I was a guy that 
I never ever had any sort of anything, you know, mm-hmm. go to the doctor or anything like that. And so I had uh, diagnosed stomach cancer. And, you know, the Lord's very gracious to me as far as uh, the prognosis was concerned. We were able to go after it and, and mm-hmm. work on that. Um, went through um, that period of time and <clears throat> had, a, had a year of, of uh, we felt like we'd, we'd gotten it and uh, actually came back, you know, about, about a mm-hmm. year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, about 14 months ago, um, um, that the summer of 2020 actually uh, discovered that it had come back, you know. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've, I've just kind of finished up uh, another you know what's been about 14 months of 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 treatment still still in that still Mm -hmm. still taking some treatment just to make sure we stay try to stay ahead of it but uh you know man you know god's been so gracious to me through it and um and and a lot of it has been through um people like the folks at Woodland High. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, 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 they have, they have stayed connected to me and prayed yeah. for me and yeah. contacted me and, um, lots of lessons. And we can talk some about that, but, um, but, but, but I'm, I'm doing well. I mean, right now we're, we're in good shape. I still have some treatment, but, uh, I'm feeling good and able to yeah. work and, and yeah. go and do yeah. things and, yeah. and, and, and feel like God's given me a lot of grace on that. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, so, um, so yeah, you know, I, and and uh, a lot of people have gone through this course, and and, and certainly right. know people who have, and yeah. it's just part of it's part of life, and yeah, and uh, but you learn a lot of lessons on on, on the way as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. and I'm I'm grateful <clears throat> God's healing process. And yeah, that you've been able to continue on with your work, and like you said, like I said earlier, that you've you've changed roles and you know, <laughs> taken on diff- different tasks, and that that's a. Uh, uh, hope, hopefully this will be a, a n- new year of yeah no changes and just yeah. kind of things will be smooth <laughs> and steady so but uh that's right yeah that's right well the uh you know and our people do love you and 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 just for those who've been asking me david's gonna come back and preach we, we have actually scheduled a couple of times and, and things just <laughs> yeah. haven't worked out yeah it's and, not been larry's fault yeah, it's right. different but, things will come but come uh, up, and they know how greedy i am for the pulpit yeah, anyway sure. and uh, uh but we are definitely going to have uh, david back to speak on a sunday because i want our fo- the rest of our folks to meet him as well well, that haven't haven't gotten an opportunity to but um one thing i wanted to kind of conclude with is is just to talk about um how how we can pray of course i know we're going to pray for your health and yeah and, but even maybe specifics about that but how we can pray for you or your family yeah and uh, uh one thing i've i've enjoyed uh, and i've been sharing with david uh, as we've been visiting a little bit this morning about uh things that are going on in our church and things that have changed wednesday nights we do a prayer service mm-hmm. and and this is an appeal to some of y'all because uh uh, Caleb is back here behind the camera, and he's there every week, and he knows that you know it's probably the lowest attended. It is the lowest attended thing we have as far as a church wide event, uh, but we have a lot of things going Wednesday night. But uh, man, the the folks that are there, we pray for everything. We probably pray for uh, seventy five people specifically on on Wednesday night. We spend wow. an hour doing that, but um, and we'll we will certainly add to our prayer list uh, specifically some things for you, but. Uh, yeah. It's just powerful when God's people get together and pray and we see and even even your story of hey, mm-hmm. we prayed for David Bond and whatever God would have chosen to do, right. we could say this is this is for his glory and for you know, God had a good purpose in this. But we can rejoice when we say, you know, hey, he's brought healing. Yeah. He's maintained your 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 job he's you know there's so, your family there's so many things that can happen when, oh, yeah. when cancer strikes a family but to be able to pray and just but just extended ways we can pray for you as well yeah well i really appreciate that and one of the things of many things that we talk about but there's no question that uh, I have learned through personal experience just how important it is to pray for one another. And it's yes. things that you always have, have preached and taught and, mm-hmm. and believed and all those type of things. But I, I'm just telling you, you know, I mean, I have, I have seen that um, in just amazing personal ways. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and I'm grateful for the healing God's given me and, and the grace he's given me. But, uh, but even, even beyond that, just, um, just the, 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 it's it's just the power behind it, and yeah. just and and not just what God does, but the 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 relationship connections of right. people who are praying for me, who let me know they're praying for me, who send yeah. me text messages, and they had no idea that I scanned that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I shared yeah. it with anybody, and right. all of a sudden, hey, I just I'm, I'm praying for you this morning, God. And, well, yeah. you know, yeah, that's <laughs> that's just, that, and, and I think that's the Holy Spirit prompting. <clears throat> You know? Yeah, and I'm t- that happened all the time. Wow, wow. 
you know, or I'd be going to get the results of a scan mm -hmm. and someone would text me that I hadn't heard from in months. I haven't mm -hmm. praying for you today. Mm -hmm. Well, that's crazy, except yeah. for the Holy Spirit yeah. and except, yeah. for, except for prayer. And it's changed how I pray for people. Right, you know, because I I, I realize uh, all that all that all that God does uh, through that. So um, yeah, so so thankful for Woodland Heights folks praying for me. But yeah, so what 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 to pray for? You know, you know, pray for our churches. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we talked about, of course, God's doing some great things at Woodland Heights, but everybody is just trying to figure this out right now. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Know? <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, uh, everybody knows that, that from this point forward, ministry's different. It's a different, right. not in all ways, but in, right. but in some significant ways. And to be open to changes that, that, you, that need yeah. to need to take place, uh, through that. So just pray, pray for, pray for our churches and pray for me and, and, and us who, who get these questions. Hey, um, what, what, what are, what are other churches doing? You know, what, yeah. what are you hearing? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. how, how are churches addressing this? How are church, you right. know, that, that's what we do many times. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're a pastor somewhere and you, you don't have time to go and <laughs> can't call you can't you go yeah. visit other churches, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. people don't like that. Uh, but, but, um, <laughs> But so so they they want to know you know how are my how are other people doing this and so so pray for wisdom there and just uh, mm -hmm. and that's part of the beautiful thing about being connected to a state convention yeah. with a fellowship like ours is we, yeah. we we have the ability to help each other out in that way so um, yeah you know just just continue to pray obviously for for my my health and strength and good good uh, response to the treatment and God's been certainly good good for me uh, good good to me in in that in that sense. Um, you know, and just and just pray for and just pray for our our our, our state convention. You know, fifteen hundred churches and pastors and staff, and and uh, you know uh, we we united around the gospel, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so and and the mission and ministry of reaching our state, yeah. our country, our world. And Larry, as you know, um, there's so many things that can distract us from that, yes. and and and, yeah. and we just are praying right now. Lord, help us to. You got to deal with things. You have to deal with and address things that need to be addressed. But, but man, let's 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 try to remember. Yeah. Who we are. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and what and, and what we're and here our ultimately. Brothers are to do. not the enemy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. And, and our brothers are not are not the enemy. And yeah. and I'm grateful for Arkansas Baptist because again, I think I, I do have the opportunity to sometimes inter interact with people in other states and other mm -hmm. state convention leaders. And and you know, Arkansas is special. Yes, in, in many, is. many ways, and I'm thankful for the leaders we have in our state, the pastors we have in our state, who provide great leadership. And mm -hmm. so we just want, and looking forward, you know, pray for uh, in three weeks we're going to gather together. We didn't get to get didn't yeah, get to gather yeah. last last year yeah. for the annual meeting, yeah. and so we're going to three weeks uh, be in Cabot together, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I'll just pray for that for that meeting. That'll be a great time of yeah. challenge and fellowship and and doing doing the work we need to do uh, to. Uh, continue on with our, our mission and ministry together and i'm just looking forward to that so just pray for that pray for that yeah. meeting meet, meeting as well but um so yeah so just um uh, thankful yeah. <laughs> i'm just, yeah. just thankful yeah. for your prayers well, and your support we will, we will close out today and i want to pray for you and pray for pray for all those requests you just mentioned yeah. i appreciate you being here david i appreciate you taking time to do this and oh absolutely uh, coming up to conway and doing this and and uh, we, thank you for watching sunday talks and Hope you all will share this uh, on all the platforms it's on, but uh, it's always good to be able to visit with friends, and, and I'm excited about the upcoming weeks and folks we're going to have, and so it's going to have a good good time yeah. together. We right. want to close that with a word of prayer, you. and uh, you join me as we pray for David. Mm -hmm. Father God, I just thank you so much for David Bond, and thank you for his family, for his wife and his daughters, and Lord, I know they are an encouragement to him. I do pray continually for his physical health. Thank I pray you. that, Lord, you would re continue yeah. to remove this cancer from his body i pray that lord wouldn't come back yes sir. and that uh, lord you would just continually strengthen him i thank you that lord even through these difficult times you have given him some things some lessons mm. and lord uh maybe most importantly the ability to identify with people who are going through a similar hardship mm. and be able to point them towards christ uh, thank you for for what you've done in that area of his life and lord we do join with him in praying for all of our churches in arkansas Lord, uh, praying for pastors and leaders who struggle and who, who need encouragement. Pray for uh, David's wisdom and, and Dr. Tucker and all those at the convention, Lord, as they uh, have, would have wisdom and discernment to lead us 
uh, as churches and a body of churches, and we do pray particularly for the uh, annual meeting coming up in Cabot, pray the Lord, mm-hmm. we would be a harmonious body, Lord, that seeks to uh, glorify you and uh, come together in unity and around the gospel and uh, find what we have in common to, to celebrate, Father. And thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to bless us. In turn, we can bless others. And so, Lord, we're just so grateful for what you're doing here at Woodland Heights and, and all over uh, Southern Baptist life, uh, particularly here in Arkansas. We're grateful for that. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.